Hello friends, welcome back to your channel Demystify Frontend and this is yet another video in the series Build Your Own Angular Forms. So we are creating Angular Form from the scratch and if you have been following this series, you must have seen how we wrote ng model directive implementation and how we implemented uh, the scenario of two-way data binding and also how we scale it to different type of form elements by writing different control value accessor directives. So we will continue with the ng model implementation by adding one more scenario that is validation. So you will see how uh, we will implement the validation flow in our ng model implementation. So before we start let me quickly introduce to you with the different parts of the validation process. So suppose you want to validate an input field and you want to make this field required. So what all we have to do? So so first of all we will have to apply the ng model directive and then we will have to pick the required validation directive so there is a selector for the required validation directive and this is uh, the directive which angular provides so we will have to make use of that attribute required and apply it on the input and the last thing we will have to get access to the form control through the ng model so for that we will export the ng model directive into a template variable and we can read the status and the error flags on that template variable so that we can show or hide the errors. So now let's see how these different parts of the validation process connect with each other. So as you can see we have applied a required attribute on our input. So there must be some validation directive supporting this required attribute selector. And likewise, we can apply as many as validation directives as we want as per our use case. Suppose now we add one more validation directive that is min length, which will ensure the input value has a minimum required length. Okay. And you can also see how we show and hide the errors based on some flags like status errors on the ng model instance which we have captured in a template variable name so ng model should have some data structure which can keep a track of the values and the validity whenever we are updating the value within the ng model so that is form control now how the form control get access to all the validations which we have applied on our form input through different types of validation directives. So here comes the role of ng model which act as a facilitator which will inject all the applied validations, all the validations which we have applied on the input and it will compose a single validator function and it will pass it to the form control when it setups the form control initially. So what happens now? The next time when there is a change in the input value either programmatically or by the user ng model will update the form control through the form control api that is set value and since form control was configured with a validator function at the time of initial setup it will validate that value through that function and update its status variables like status and error and so that we can update the validation within our form element so that's all from the that's all from this video and going forward we will see a couple of videos recorded just to implement this entire flow in actual and if you like the content if you like the information i shared in this video do like it share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe till then thank you bye bye